What's up guys, Max from MaxWorks here, and today we are embarking on a brand new project. So let's check it out. So they say there is nothing in life more expensive than a free boat. And I can tell you from personal experience, that's absolutely true. <clears throat> So I did get this boat for free, but uh, the goal is to see if we can restore this boat, maybe not to perfection, but at least get it back on the water. So before we get started in on what's going on with this, let's talk a little bit about what this thing is. Uh, this is a 1974 Formula Thunderbird 190. And if you've never heard of a Thunderbird 190, it's not surprising. Uh, because Thunderbird was a company that kind of went away in the uh, late 70s, but it was the foundation of what would become Formula Boats today. And if you guys know anything about boats, you know that Formula Boats make some of the most badass uh, power cruisers on the market. Uh, if anything, they make like fantastic power luxury boats. But because before Formula, you know, became a no name in speedboat racing and before it became a luxury uh, powerboat manufacturer, the original company was called Thunderbird. And this boat is a Thunderbird T190. And the T uh, designates the fact that it is, if we take a look up here, it has a cathedral tri-V hull. So that's what the T stands for. And what that means is this boat should be, in theory, uh, very very stable on choppy water and this boat has actually been used in the gulf quite a bit uh, and for a saltwater boat i don't really see much in the way of damage it has this very cool old uh, aluminized roller trailer that's in really good shape um, we actually towed this boat home from houston basically threw a set of uh of new trailer wheels and tires on it uh, a little bit of grease and she towed home just fine it is equipped with a johnson 135 horsepower uh, outboard motor this thing is pretty old school right so you see there's no hydraulics there's no tilt it literally has like a a pin system so when you're out of the water you can set the pre-tilt of the motor and that's it um and part of the reason i think we can be successful in bringing this boat back to life is because frankly it's got an outboard motor, a control set for the outboard motor, one switch for lights, and that's it. And in theory, because it's a Thunderbird, the entire tub should be fiberglass. So there should be no uh, wooden stringers in this boat, from my understanding, so there's nothing to really fail. What's, what's the plan here? The plan is pretty basic. We're gonna see if we can get this motor running uh, and working, and honestly, if the motor works, then we can move on to all the other fancy things. Uh, the trailer is going to need new rollers. It's going to need a little bit of modification here in the front. And the boat, well, the boat's going to need a lot of help. It's been sitting outside for about 20 years. And so if we hop up in here real quick, I'll take you guys on a little tour. Uh, so this is the front of the boat. It's got seating area, all the cushions have gone but uh hopefully we can make some new ones right it's not not too hard to make cushions and all the seats are gone except for that one which probably was the captain's seat yeah there you go you can see the stain from from where it is uh, and in the back well there's room to do whatever we want right we can make whatever kind of seats uh we want and so the way that this works is you have an outboard motor back here <clears throat> and the steering, the control lines all feed up into that little control box right there. And that is also Johnson Brandon. So when you buy an outboard motor from, from Johnson or Yamaha or whoever, you can basically buy the motor and all of this connectivity and you would retrofit it into a boat like this. Um, but we're going to try to make all this original stuff work. It looks like battery kind of goes here somewhere. That's where the cables are. There are a few kind of aftermarket gas tanks to choose from. Um, and as far as I can tell, the factory gas fill is right here. And the goal for today is uh, maybe to clean some of this stuff out and kind of see what we're working with. 
But I just wanted to show you, see right here, this, this is the uh, Thunderbird logo on modern boats. This is, this logo was carried over and is now uh, a Formula Boats logo. Over here, I cleaned these up a little bit with a rag, but I wanted to show you guys, these are some really cool old school gauges. So it's uh, air guide, air guide gauge, but check it out. That's like true seventies awesomeness, speed tachometer. Um, so this shows you your engine speed. This shows you your water speed. Uh, this is a compass. We have a fuel gauge that I am not sure if is real or aftermarket. And the only button on the entire boat is this, which controls the nav lights. Um, and that's it. Then you have a steering wheel. The steering wheel does turn the boat motor, which is cool. So that's connected. It actually doesn't feel too bad. And if we grab this, um, this right here, this actually doesn't move too bad. And I do in fact warm up, oh, so there's a choke. And then this is probably a key. And then this is maybe your starter or a kill switch. Um, but we could probably get all this working without too much issue. All in all, this thing's pretty dirty. It's pretty gross. I'm gonna get some gloves and a trash bag and we're gonna see uh, if we can clean some of this crap out of here. I want to give you guys a little progress update here. Take a look. So up here in the front, we've got everything swept out. In the back, we're kind of working our way through here. Um, I think I found the gas tanks like normal. It's mounted down here, but that's full of dirt in there. So that's going to be interesting. I am not sure I've ever cleaned out an entire trash bag worth of topsoil out of a vehicle before and I'm not done. There's still quite a bit of vegetative matter and dirt in here. So just finished vacuuming the old girl out. This is as clean as I can make it. Um, so all we really did was we just vacuumed it out. I tried to get all the loose dirt and stuff out. And as you can see, you can actually see the carpet all the way back. Um, we pulled some of the gunk out of here. Um, try to get everything out of these little cubbies so it's not rotting in there well, i think what we're going to do is we're going to take the cover off the motor now and take a little more in-depth look at what's going on in there so one of my things is before you jump into a project like this especially on a motor you haven't worked on it's really good to take a few minutes kind of look around make sure you understand what's going on and it lets you kind of get ahead of problems and parts in advance so let's just work our way around the motor and we're gonna start on this side over here. So as I mentioned before, this is your air intake. These are your two sets of carburetors for your four cylinders. This is a fuel pump, vacuum driven fuel pump. Uh, and so once you pump up some gas to, the, to here and the carbs fire, this will keep fuel pumping to the carburetors. Moving on, we have our starter here. This is our starter solenoid. This is our main computer connection, if you want to call it. It's our, our brains for all of our ignition. Up here, we have a flywheel. And uh, there's probably some sort of sensor under there that lets you know uh, timing. We have a lift hook. We have coils for these two cylinders. Uh, you can see these are pretty badly cracked, which means they would arc like crazy. So we're going to have to replace them. Up here, you have a distribution block uh, for certain wiring. Um, it's just labeled by colors, but by the look of it, it's probably grounds for the ignition as well as for the Hall effect sensor. Here we have our cylinder heads. Remember, these are two stroke motors, which means that uh, they don't have traditional valves. They have slots in the in the piston, in the jug, generally it's called, um, that bring in uh, fuel and air as the piston moves up and down and this allows you to have combustion stroke every two strokes instead of every four like you would on a four stroke makes sense 
So there's our spark plug holes. We've got a little bit of ATF in there. This right here is almost certainly exhaust on a two stroke. Um, the power that you make and how you make that power is generally dependent on the shape of your exhaust. Um, that's why you see two stroke bikes will often have this kind of big goofy like looking tube at the side and that determines your power band. Um, so this feeds exhaust and probably cools it with water and feeds it down here as these are the exhaust ports I would expect uh, the exhaust to come out of. This is our control panel and it was cool that I pulled this rubber piece off and it's still pretty subtle in here and there's not really a lot of oxidation in here, which is great. So these four are your coils and then these other ones are on this diagram. So it just shows you colors and then it shows you uh, your four coils as well as your ground sensor wires. Here we have a ground wire, stuff like this is almost certainly gonna have to be replaced. You can see how badly corroded that is. Um, over here, we've got our other cylinder heads, our other set of coils. And as we come around the motor here, this is gonna be your selector for your shift, uh, forward and reverse, which controls the transmission down below. And then this is going to be your um, accelerator. So you can see there's a there's a stop, maximum speed stop, as well as a connection up here. And then over here, this is gonna be an electric choke, probably, or it's, uh, I guess maybe it's a mechanical choke. No, it should be an electric choke because it's connected to this. Um, but there's a choke lever up there, so maybe there's an additional control. And these are your shifter uh, and throttle cables, uh, which connect back up to the front. Um, and then as we go down here, so this is what's called a power head or a power unit. So there's going to be a shaft that comes down here, <clears throat> makes a right angle and spins our propeller, right? And that's how the boat goes forward, goes reverse. That's all good. As you can see, there's a fill screw here and there's a drain screw inside of here. That's going to be your transmission fluid. We're going to have to change that. But the most important part is we're going to have to drop this bottom unit, which connects with bolts right up here because somewhere either is our, probably in here, is our impeller drive unit. And what that's gonna do is that sucks water from in here and pumps it through the engine and keeps the engine cool. Uh, generally speaking, the number one failure of any marine motor, um, whether it's an outboard, an inboard, uh, jet skis, whatever, is the engine overheats. And the reason it overheats is because the impeller has failed uh, or is operating below its capacity. And generally speaking, impellers, they like to push water. They don't like to pull water as much. So on outboards, it's usually mounted down low, um, making sure that it's feeding cold water through the engine at all times. Uh, if you have to run an outboard on land, like we're going to, uh, there's two different methods. The first is I call earmuffs. They basically clamp on the water inlet. This is your water inlet right here and you can run a hose to them and the pressure of the hose generates enough volume to feed the pump and keep the engine cool the other option which uh, i prefer and we're gonna have to get one is to find one of those blue 55 gallon drums and then just drop this whole motor into into that drum and fill it up with water um, on this one it might be a little complicated because this doesn't have power tilt but uh that's usually the best way to do it. That way you have a large volume of water and you can test that the uh, uh, water pump is actually pumping water rather than it's just hose pressure. My plan is we need to track down a rebuild kit for the carburetors. They're almost certainly gonna need uh, some help. Uh, we need to replace our coils and spark plugs, those I've already ordered. Um, we need to get a battery to test the starter motor. And then I probably have enough uh, wiring left over from other projects to basically do the starter wiring and kind of replace all these uh, little grounds and stuff uh, to make sure that uh, this thing will be good electronically. And one of the things I always like to do is I like to put a little bit of, this is just regular old fashioned ATF. I'll put a little ATF in all the cylinders and what this will do is it'll both clean and lubricate um, as we spin the motor around. And so I got a 36 millimeter socket on top here. And so we're gonna just rotate this guy around. And she spins over really smoothly. That spun over really well. So that lets me know that 
this motor is probably in pretty good shape. Um, but we'll see how much I can get out of there and I'll, I'll update you guys once I'm done.